1978, San Diego. I'd just come out on the other side of a relationship. I was angry and disillusioned and ultimately self-destructive. I lost everything I believed in. I was utterly and completely alone. So I, so I began going on walks. I started taking late night walks around the San Diego suburb I was living in. I'd start walking early evening and come back close to midnight, sometimes later, and walking and thinking and chewing over what had gone wrong. One night at 4th and East Streets, I got mugged and beat by a street man. They sent me to the hospital with serious operations of mortality. When the ER techs asked what my religion was, I refused to answer. I made my private peace with the universe, content with whatever was going to happen. I never know. But something happened. I got angry. I got angry because I still had stories to tell. So I fought back. It took two months to fully recover, but two things came out of that incident. First, I have no fear of death. None whatsoever. Second, as soon as I was well enough, I started walking again, sometimes until 3 or 4 in the morning, through parts of town that made even street people lose. When people asked what I was doing out there, the only answer I could give was I'm looking for something. So I kept walking through some of the most dangerous parts of San Diego before it got cleaned up, but it was still home to hookers and drugs and gangs. Finally, one afternoon, I came to the same area as I walked through at night, and I was struck by the dichotomy between that corner at night and that very same corner during the day. In the daylight, there were businessmen and kids and clerks eager to get home to dinner and TV. But then later came the night shift, the lost people, emerging from shadows and beds of pain to walk the same streets in search of fixes, money, and bars, gradually fading away with the dawn. Two totally different worlds, sharing nothing but longitude and there was the nation of the day, and the nation at night, existing side by side, but each fleeing the other. A daylight nation, and a midnight nation. I saw a country bifurcated by more than just the presence and absence of light, but my lives cast aside and lost and uncared for. The walked away and the thrown away on one side, and on the other, those who pretended not to see them. Because not seeing is easier. And I saw someone forced to walk both sides of the metaphor to learn that the greatest cruelty is our casual blindness to the despair of others. That there but for the grace of whatever god you subscribe to goes any of us. And finally I realized that I had found what I was looking for without ever being quite sure what it was. I found a story that would make my own life make sense of it. This story. I still take long walks and I still stop and talk to the people who stand at the corner and wait for something to happen to them. Who wait for money to fall into a hat or a cup wait for someone to recognize their pain because the line between the midnight nation and the place where I sit right now writing these words is thin and ephemeral and can be crossed in an instant because the road to the midnight nation can be erased only through compassion I found my story, this story on a hazy afternoon in 1978 now it's yours the keys to the midnight nation are in your hands what you do with them is up to you J. Michael Straczynski Sherman Oaks, California July 21st, 2002